Yo, you're watching Screaming Fish here, people, and once again, I'm here for you guys with another video. But first off, you're going to be wondering, one, what am I doing here? Well, for starters, I'm recording this video a bit late, you see. So, I'm doing this in order to not disturb people. So, um, yeah. Also, you're probably going to be wondering what happened to my uh, other hat about that. Um, considering I am currently reviewing... Kong Skull Island, which is a monster movie, I thought I would wear my monster-ish hat. So, um... Yeah! I mean, if you're a five-year-old five year old watching this, then the most likely scenario is that you're probably going to be terrified of this. Don't panic, don't panic. I'm not... Um, I'm not a monster, if you're five. But, uh, if you're watching this video and you can get through that, then good for you. Also, enjoy the video, just for crying out loud. Just enjoy it, you know. Because, at the end of the day, movie reviews, and my thing. So, uh, yeah. So, without further ado, let's get into my review of Consco Island. And, just basically, I'll just share my thoughts with you guys. And, yeah. Also, That was incredibly pointless. Um, anywho, yeah, let's just get on with it. I'll just uh, exit real slow, like, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly. I am so bad at holding cameras. Really, what am I doing right now? At this moment in time, I'm willing to predict that when this decade is done and dusted, I'm going to predict that the movie buffs and critics al alike all over the world, basically, are going to dub this decade the decade of the cinematic universe. Well, that's what I'm going to call it anyway. Pro pro people won't, other people probably won't, but I'm going to call it that because there's just been a whole lot of cinematic universe stuff going on. I mean, really, for the past six years, we've had movies like The Avengers bring its cinematic universe full circle with characters like Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and Hulk in one movie that was not only absolutely amazing, but also proved that a shared cinematic universe spread across multiple movies can be done, and done brilliantly. And since then, we've had DC follow suit with their own cinematic universe, despite what you think of it, and a Monsters universe with Godzilla and King Kong and others, others existing all in that one universe, and soon to be another Monsters universe, but with The Mummy, The Wolfman, and I guess Frankenstein, or Jekyll and Hyde, or whoever the heck is in that universe. To be honest, I don't know much about that universe. Moving on. When I first watched 2014's Godzilla, I will admit that I did have fun with the movie, and the visuals were amazing. But there is no denying that the film was inhabited by incredibly bland characters, and for a movie called Godzilla, I was disappointed to realise that the King of Monsters himself was only in the movie for literally only 10 minutes. So, now that I've seen Kong Scar Island, the second instalment into this universe, uh, I can finally review it and give you my thoughts on it, but this time... I'm going to do something different and not give you a quick summary of what I actually think about this movie and instead jump right into the review and explain where I think this movie succeeds and fails and at the end give you my general opinion of the movie. So, uh, firstly, I have to praise the performances. Everyone in this movie gives a really fun and likeable performance. I really enjoyed how the characters bounced off each other which made for some of the film's best character moments. Brie Larson was pretty darn good. Tom Hilston was really fun in this movie, and obviously John John Goodman and Samuel Jackson are great in this movie. However, a real standout amongst them is John C. Riley as a World War II pilot who crash landed on Skull Island in World War II. He really steals the show in terms of comedy, partly due to the fact that it was fun seeing someone who's been trapped on this island since World War II discovering discovering through the, the rest of the characters what has become of the world since World War II. It's nice to see the actors in this movie were clearly having a blast making this movie, and you can tell that by their performances they all really wanted to be in this movie. The cast really do give it their all, and they're just all a joy to watch on screen, based on their performances alone. But unfortunately, aside from a few moments in the movie, there is almost no characterization. Brie Larson gets nothing in this movie. She's just in this movie because she is a photographer. Her character has almost no character development or any reason to care about her. 
They attempt to try and make her a badass action hero in the most ridiculous way possible, which really betrayed the overall feel of the movie at one point. But even Tom Hiddleston's character, who is one of the main leads who kind of needs to be developed aside from one scene, we get nothing. Everyone else in this movie has literally no backstory or any reason to care about them. They're just funny and likeable, and while funny and likeable are good qualities to have in, a char in characters, the lack of backstory here creates a fatal flaw that pretty much affects the action sequences. Whenever a character died on screen, I didn't really care because they had no character development or backstory. John C. Riley's character, for example, just imagine the stories he could tell or what he's been through living on that island. But unfortunately, we don't get much of that as Riley, for the most part, serves as an exposition mas machine as great as the performance was. But he's an expo exposition machine for the majority of the movie. And while he does have some pretty funny moments, and to be fair, the performance is great, like I just said, I really do think that this was a missed opportunity to tell the story from his, this character's perspective because I think that could have been a really good movie. But either way, I was prepared to see this one, but I'm really sad to see that he wasn't given as much development as as I think he should have. However, Sam L. Jackson's character is really the closest we come to having an interesting character, as he is really the only character in this movie that I felt was properly developed. And I actually found his motivations in this movie very interesting. But another problem I had with this movie was the comedy. Don't get me wrong, there were a few jokes that landed landed and had me chuckling quite a few times, most notably John C. Riley's jokes. But a number of the jokes um, didn't really land for me, and they actually do get quite repetitive. This movie uses this one joke repeatedly through throughout the movie as if it were trying to turn it into some sort of meme. And while it was funny the first couple of times, that one joke quickly became the Jar Jar Binks of this movie which the way I would describe that would be an annoying presence that the filmmakers thought would be a hit, but were clearly wrong. And while it is funny the first couple of times, it, it just gets old. As for the story itself, the first act of this movie is pretty good. I like how the characters were introduced and how it set up the upcoming events, but admittedly, it is a bit exposition heavy at times, but it wasn't to the extent where it annoyed me, but it was noticeable when the movie explains to the audience what is going to happen what and this exposition they're going on about three times in the first act alone just in case there were a few audience members in the background just not listening they just wanted to make sure that people knew that but I, I think they just kind of went a bit overboard with the exposition here but when the second act of this movie kicks in the movie for a majority of the second act rapidly cuts between two different storylines at a pace that really makes it hard to grasp what is actually going on and it eventually gets to the point where the events that take place in this movie are edited into one giant mess. But despite the flock I've given this movie already for its story and characters, I was entertained by this and despite technically being worse than Godzilla in the story and characterization part of the mix, I, I think Kong Skull Island Skull Island, Skull Island, Skull Island, I can't say Skull, I can't say Skull, what are you saying Jack Fisher? Get on with the review. I can say that thankfully Con Skull Island is fast paced enough to keep, keep me entertained without ever getting bored. So what I'm trying to say here is that I can actually sit through Con Skull Island and not get bored, but whereas in Godzilla there were a few times I got bored, so getting better, ish. So, um, as for pros, for starters, like I said, at the beginning of this review, the characters are just a joy to watch on screen, even if they barely have any backstory. The performances from pretty much everyone in this movie are fantastic, and I like, I like how the dynamic between the characters is just spot on throughout, it never faltered once. And how could I be so far into this review and not even mention the title character? King Kong himself! is amazing in this movie. The time and effort that must have gone into rendering the visuals is ridiculous. He looks almost photorealistic in this movie, and he has some amazing action sequences that blew my mind, which I will talk more about later. One of the complaints that I had with Godzilla was that Godzilla himself was in, this, in his own movie for no more than 10 minutes. 
Kong is in this movie for a lot, which really made me happy that the director wasn't afraid to have a concept that, on the whole, sounds ridiculous on paper. But despite that, he kept this guy, this guy in the movie for more than just 10 minutes, so much more than just 10 minutes. This movie is really good looking, believe me. Like I said, Kong, Kong himself looks amazing, but particularly in the opening sequence, this that that sequence is just shot so well, and I will admit it is kind of my uh, favorite scene in the movie. But the camera work in this movie, despite the terrible editing that is very noticeable at times, the visual effects are just amazing. And yes, it is just shot so very well, and that coupled with some amazing special effects make for some really thrilling scenes that <clears throat> really do look beautiful visually. And yeah, there are a few times where the act where you can clearly tell the actors are staring at, are standing in front of a green screen. But really, I found the, I I didn't really notice it too much. So I, overall, I think the visuals were mostly pretty good. And I also got to admit, I really like the soundtrack of this movie. It never got annoying once or persistent. It just flowed really well with the movie and fitted the tone really well. And and it was it was good to see that because I mean we had, we kind of entered a phase in 2016 where the movie soundtrack was just like there for no reason. But this movie it kind of it it placed the songs really well and it fitted the tone of the scene. So I was glad to see that. And the action. Oh, Spagbol, the action. The action in this movie is the living diction dictionary definition of the word kick-ass. The fight scenes between Kong and the other monsters in, th in this movie are incredible. They were so much fun to watch. The scene where our characters first encounter Kong alone is phenomenal, and like I said earlier, it's my favourite scene in the movie. That There's always this constant suspense in the action sequences that had me on the edge of my seat, and... One action sequence in, a partic in particular that takes place in, a, in this dinosaur graveyard gave me goosebumps within every second. And I also really enjoyed the references to the other potential movies in the franchise. And I feel that this movie expands this cinematic universe really well. I found a lot of the easter eggs and references to the other monsters that are soon to be appearing in this universe. Possibly in their own movies or future Godzilla movies or Kong movies. Um really good and and they got me really excited for the future of this franchise the third act of this movie is pretty much pure awesomeness as soon as the third act kicks in for the entirety of the third act i was at the edge of my seat i was actually hooked and interested in what was actually going on and it was it was really at that point that i thought this movie was actually trying to be something more than the monster beating up beating up it had been for the majority of the first two acts and i loved it so, on the whole, yes, Conskull Island is a bit of a mess, with mostly underdeveloped characters, but the movie, thankfully, was fast-paced enough to keep me entertained with exhilarating action sequences, great performances, and character dynam dynamic, and some really cool visuals. I thought this was a decent movie on the whole <coughs> because of that, and Kong Skull Island, Skull Island admittedly is nowhere near great, but I would definitely say that this was a decent film. And I had a fun time with it. And I do have high hopes for the future movies set in this universe. And as far as I'm concerned, as flawed as the as both Godzilla and Kongskar and are, they have proven that this franchise has a chance at being something great. If they were to improve a few things here and there, uh Kongska Island sequels and Godzilla sequels and any other movies in this franchise have a chance and yeah, like I said, I really do have high hopes for this franchise. So overall, Conska Island was a decent movie. So, guys, that was my review of Conska Island. What did you think of it? Have you seen it? Personally, I thought it was alright, but please leave your thoughts of the movie and this video in general in the comments below. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Why am I clicking? And be sure to check out the next video whenever the heck it comes out. Usually, I just don't really put really I haven't really put release dates on these videos because you know skew. You know, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys later.